Now at five, lawmakers in Oklahoma advance a bill to ban emergency contraception. Plus, we test the knowledge of some four state students about President's Day. Former President Trump and former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley trade barbs days ahead of the South Carolina Republican primary. I'm Skyler Henry at the White House, says support for Trump remains high despite his legal woes. The four states most watched news starts now. Oklahoma lawmakers are advancing a bill that would ban emergency contraception and create a database of people who have had an abortion. This is KOAM News at 5. I'm Tanya Bach. A state House committee last week advanced the bill. If passed, it would require prescription to access Plan B and other forms of birth control. It would also allow civil lawsuits against anyone who helps a woman get an abortion and create a state database to track who had the procedure. Opponents say the bill could make contraception unacceptable to many women and it would violate the privacy of citizens. Well, Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us. Well, it actually turned out to be a nice Monday for us today after kind of a cold weekend started to warm back up yesterday and today. Most of us got into the mid 40s for afternoon highs, which is pretty good. 51 in Stockton, 50 in Neosho, 54 in Welch, Neosho is sitting at 55 degrees. A little breezy. We got southerly winds kind of kicking in at about uh, 5 to 10 to 15 miles per hour. Those are going to back down as we go through the evening hours, slide back through the 40s. Eventually, kind of cold later on tonight. We drop back near freezing. We do have some clouds which are shooting through and we do even have a few showers. A lot of this is not reaching the ground, but a few little sprinkles or a quick shower kind of passing through. But these are going to be gone as we get into uh, really about after 7 p.m. Much warmer next few days. We're going to talk about that here in just a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. Well, today is President's Day. The federal holiday was established in 1879. The holiday was originally created to celebrate the birthday of our nation's first president, George Washington. He was born on February 22nd, and then the holiday has since been moved to the third Monday of February. And there are many other presidents who each have their own unique traits. We spoke with four staters to find out just how much they knew. Who is our current president? Donald Trump. No, we already had him. We have a different one right now. It starts with a J. Who, who is our current president yeah, and vice president? Uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They sometimes call him Sleepy Joe. Joe Biden. Very good. Most schools in our area had the day off for President's Day. Pittsburgh kids were able to participate in fun games and activities at the Lincoln Center. An update now on the health of former President Jimmy Carter. The 39th president marked one year in hospice care yesterday. Jimmy Carter is the oldest living U.S. president in history. He's 99. He survived metastatic brain cancer, liver cancer, and a number of health scares including brain surgery after a fall in 2019. He entered hospice care after a series of hospital stays last year. Republicans go to the polls in South Carolina on Saturday. It's the next state in the race to lock up the GOP nomination. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. Nikki Haley used the President's Day holiday to meet as many voters as possible in her own bid to become president. We're in all these small towns, we're in the big areas, we're in the small areas, and it's touching hands, it's answering questions, and it's reminding them, one, what we did in South Carolina, and the fact that we could be that successful in America. With just five days to go until the South Carolina primary, Haley is trailing in the polls in her home state by double digits. She's downplaying the possibility of a win saying instead that she wants to be competitive. We're going to keep on doing what we're doing. We've got people excited in South Carolina. They're ready to vote. They've already started early voting. We'll see what happens on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we're headed to Michigan. Haley has been sharpening her attacks on Trump's foreign policy while the former president is focused on his various legal battles. The judges and prosecutors that were dealing with me are essentially all the same. Different wrappings, tone, manner. 
but always the same coordinated and overly nasty result. They are nasty. Trump campaigned in Michigan over the weekend and took aim at the latest court ruling in New York, where he was ordered to pay more than $350 million in fines. The case is a complete and total sham. It's a sham case. Many Trump supporters agree. I think some of it is politically motivated, obviously. The timing and everything is just kind of, oh, really? <laughs> You're going to do this to him now while he's running for president again? Trump will hold a rally in Greenville, South Carolina on Tuesday night. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. A former President Trump acknowledged the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny for the first time Monday, mentioning Navalny in a social media post before quickly transitioning to talking about his court cases. Well, people continue to lay flowers at the Solvetsky Stone in Moscow to honor the life of Alexei Novani, despite reports of people being detained after paying their respects. The French ambassador to Russia, Pierre Lévy, paid his respects today at the monument that has become a symbol of silenced voices under President Vladimir Putin. A prominent rights group is reporting more than 300 people have been detained while paying tribute to Novani this past weekend. The U.S. Army has spent hundreds of millions of dollars to support Ukraine's war after against Russia over the last few months. And that's because Congress has not passed supplemental funding for Ukraine recently. Army officials are concerned that without new funding, money will, be, will need to be pulled from other critical projects to continue supporting Ukraine. Since October 2023, the Army has spent more than $430 million on various operations. Still ahead technology to prevent food waste. We're on board the icon of the seas. It's the world's biggest cruise ship. I'm Chris Van Cleve in the Bahamas. World's biggest cruise ship means a whole lot of food is on board. We're gonna show you the tools they're using so they don't waste it. That's coming up. And next in Health Watch, health experts share tips to parents about how to help your teenager prioritize sleep. Topping today's Health Watch, new data shows hundreds of hospitals in rural areas are at risk of closing. According to the data from Chartist, the Chicago Healthcare Advisory Services firm, a total of 141 rural hospitals have shut down since 2010 and another 453 could follow. Among the remaining operating rural hospitals, many are dropping critical health services such as maternal care and cancer treatments. Well, a study finds some popular breakfast products may contain a chemical often linked to infertility. The study, published in the Journal of Exposure, Science and Environmental Epidemiology, says four out of five Americans may have a pesticide in their bodies called chloramiquat. The chemical has been found in oat products such as Quaker Oats and Cheerios. Chloramiquat is, has been in previous studies been linked to infertility, disrupted fetal growth, and metabolic disruptions. When new study shows no significant link between premature birth and autism, a team of doctors and researchers analyzed records from hospitals and community clinics in Israel between 2005 and 2017. Researchers initially found a link between preterm delivery and autism, but after considering other factors that could be involved, such as ethnicity, maternal age, and the infant's gender and size for its gestational age, the link vanished. Well, it's recommended that teens should sleep eight to 10 hours a night, but health experts say many are getting far less than that, and it can have a significant impact on their health and even their development. Mandy Gaither has more on how a lack of sleep can affect teens and how parents can help them prioritize getting those Zs. It's an important part of everyone's health, but sleep is especially critical for those who are still growing. A lot of the important functions that they're developing, including executive functioning, decision making, emotion regulation, impulse control, those um, skills are all developing during sleep. The CDC says youth who don't get enough sleep have a higher risk of obesity, diabetes, injuries, poor mental health, and problems with attention and behavior. It also is that our growth hormone is released during sleep, so our adolescents are literally growing during sleep. 
Lisa Meltzer is a pediatric sleep specialist with National Jewish Health. She says for many teens, a big barrier to sleep is social media. Recently, Meta introduced a nighttime nudge on Instagram that encourages teen users to stop scrolling late at night. This is useful because teens can't turn the nudges off. They can't ignore them, but at least they pop up and give teens a sense that it's getting late and perhaps it's time to wind down, turn the technology off. Parents also play a role in helping teens prioritize sleep. Meltzer says bedtime routines are important. Have them go to bed and get up at roughly the same times every day, even on weekends. She says not to stay up too late or sleep in more than two hours. Even though it feels like they need that sleep, it's going to set their circadian rhythm off, and that's going to make it harder for them to fall asleep come Sunday night. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Well, Meltzer says part of the bedtime routine should be some wind down time and whether that's reading a book, taking a shower or meditating. That's a look at today's health news. A little later, we take a look at how new AI technology could impact this year's presidential election. Plus, we're going to continue to warm up as we go through the next few days. We're going to check that out coming up next. Well, it turned out to be a decent Monday for us today. A little bit warmer than what we saw yesterday. And of course, on a Saturday was a super cold day, but majority of the month has been above average for this time of the year. In fact, uh, the first nine days, we were above average. Last week and cooled down a bit, back up last week, and then back down high of only 33 on Saturday, but back into the 50s for us today. And we're gonna see a big warm up as we go through the next couple days. All right, let's go outside. Here's a nice shot. This is Indigo Sky Casino and Resort, of course. Indigo is just outside of Seneca, Missouri. Pretty much clear skies. We have had some clouds shooting through, so it depends where you live. But overall, temperatures have been great. Most of us have been sitting into the mid-50s across the region. We're going to continue to see pretty nice temperatures as we go through the evening hours. Kind of slipping back through the 50s eventually. We still have a south wind at about 5 to 15. So what that's been doing for us is helping those temperatures warm up a little bit more for us today. So breezy as we go through the evening hours, then the winds will start to back down a bit. Later on tonight, we'll slide back through the 50s, 40s, eventually low to mid 30s later on tonight. So it is going to be kind of cold. All right, let's go outside. You can see those clouds kind of shooting through. And we've had a few light little showers. A lot of this hasn't even been reaching the ground, but there may be a few sprinkles out there, especially east of I-49. This wave will quickly shoot off toward the east. And you can see besides that, there's not a whole bunch going on. So we're going to be fine tonight and then into the daytime hours tomorrow. Here's our next storm system we'll keep our eyes on as we head into late Wednesday and Thursday. It's, it's going to kind of weaken as it pushes into the central plains and kind of flatten out as it heads toward us by the time we head into Wednesday and Thursday. So it's not going to have a lot of energy, but a wave will push in Wednesday evening. Temperatures look great all week long. We stay with nice conditions all the way into the weekend. And then a stronger storm system will start to affect us early next week, Monday, Tuesday, and then we'll cool down behind that system. So until we get there, we're not going to have a lot of action this week, but we could get around to thunderstorms. This is going to be next Monday. So that's the next uh, really wave that we're really going to keep our eyes on. All right, let's go through tonight. Temperatures kind of chilly. We back down 33, 34 degrees. Sunny skies tomorrow. Look at this lower 60s by noon. I think most of us are going to warm upper 60s during the afternoon. So a fantastic day. Tomorrow night, we get a few clouds in here late. We'll drop back only into the upper 40s. And then on Wednesday, mostly cloudy skies, but temperatures should go in that 70 to about 72 degree range by the time we head into Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday night, some scattered thunderstorms could blow up. Some of those could be a little bit stronger, but they're gonna be very hit and miss across the region. Day planner for your Tuesday, 34 to start, but look at the afternoon high, 67 degrees, 72 on Wednesday, 64 on Thursday, a few morning showers. Uh, yeah, look at the stretch of weather, 60s and 70s for the next eight days. That is beautiful. I love Pretty it. Pretty good. Yeah, we won't look at next Thursday, nope. but the rest of it, love it. All right, thanks, Doug. 
Well, coming up, how cruise lines are using AI technology to cut back on food waste. Topping today's Consumer Watch, artificial intelligence or AI is continuing to grow in popularity. It can be found all across the web. Now users can generate fake images with just a few clicks of a mouse. But can advancing technologies and the ability to create realistic images and videos pose a threat during election season? One local AI researcher says yes. We are not prepared for what is going to happen on this election season. We have already seen, um, just an example, the one that came right to mind was that Joe Biden's voice was used as, on a robocall um, to influence voters, I think, in Iowa. And researchers say AI is not going anywhere, so voters should stay aware of its capabilities for upcoming elections. Whether it's a winter warm up or time to think about spring break, more Americans are expected to take a cruise this year than ever before. But cruise lines are increasingly trying to balance the endless buffets and unlimited food options with cutting waste. CBS's Chris Van Cleve reports. When the icon of the seas set sail on its inaugural voyage last month, the world's biggest cruise ship with a capacity of nearly 10,000 passengers and crew left Miami with more than 130,000 pounds of food. Enough to feed a small city for seven days at more than 40 restaurants, bars and entertainment venues. And using a new AI system developed by Royal Caribbean, aiming to prevent as much of that food as possible from going to waste. I think the single biggest thing that any human being can do is not waste food. And I'm, I'm super passionate about it. Lincoln D'Souza is leading the effort to cut Royal Caribbean's food waste in half by 2025. The new AI system will be able to better predict exactly how much food, down to individual ingredients, a vessel will need for a specific cruise. We'll be able to tell our crew members and our chefs on board the ship exactly how much of a protein they need, what recipes they're going to use them in, which venues they're going to be used for, just based on information like where the ship is going, the historical data as it relates to our guests, the demographics of the guests sailing on that ship. During its preview sailings, Icon has been utilizing about 86% of its food. That's well within its goals, but that still means thousands of pounds of food gets thrown out. Competitor Carnival says its cruise lines, on average, generate 1.3 pounds of food waste per person per day. Their ships have been outfitted with biodigesters, which convert food waste into a liquid. The company says that system breaks down 99% of the food put into it, cutting food waste by 35% fleet-wide. For health and safety reasons, once food is put out at a buffet or served, it can't go back into the kitchen, so it's either eaten or thrown away. But not all unused food gets thrown out on Icon. The ship is home to the world's first floating water park, which is in part powered by food waste, trashed cardboard, and bio-waste. They get converted into pellets that, when heated, give off steam that generates power. Royal Caribbean says it's already reduced food waste by about 33 percent across its fleet of 28 ships, saving tens of millions of dollars a year and literally tons of food. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, off the coast of the Bahamas. Well, new proposed environmental rule changes could allow automakers extra time in conversions to electric vehicles. Reports say the Biden administration may allow the Environmental Protection Agency to loosen rules in the short term on vehicle pollution, giving automakers more time in switching to EVs and lessening the number of EVs they have to have in fleets by 2030. Well, final check of the forecast is next. Up next on the CBS Evening News, one college's innovative solution to the growing need for food pantries on campus. And then on KOAM News at 6, we'll have more on concerns about artificial intelligence impacting this year's election. Plus, a chance for Caney, Kansas residents to sign up for soil remediation. And Missouri Southern Baseball looks to extend its winning streak to eight as they take on the University of Mary. Stay with us for the CBS Evening News and then on KOAM News at 6. Final check of the forecast. Yeah, it looks uh, pretty good for us this evening. It is going to be chilly tonight. We drop back to about 33, 34 degrees. 
67 tomorrow, so quite a bit warmer, up to 72 on Wednesday. Could get a few random little thunderstorms popping up late Wednesday night. Bring on the warmth. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thanks for joining us. The CBS Evening News is next. And of course, we'll be right back here for KOAM News at 6, and we'll see you then. Have a great evening and an even better tomorrow.